This is a, a really handy blade, not only for cutting into ivory and stuff and bone, but also for wood. Uh, I use it for chip carving, like say if I make a cup and I do this chip carving around the mm -hmm. edge, this is a great little tool to dig in there and cut them little chips out. Somebody once said, the tools are the language to which you speak to your material and I want to speak clearly, you need a sharp tool. That, and that. Back to the water stone. And this, obviously, as a knife, has a knife grind, so I'll be honing down both sides, creating that feather edge, a little thin thread of steel. Again, I'm uh, relying on the sheen, the reflection. This coarser stone makes it look grayer, less shiny. I can tell I need to do the edge more. I like to try to maintain the angle of the blade the, throughout the whole blade. So if I spend a few strokes here grinding the body of it back here without touching the cutting edge, I don't feel like I've wasted my time because that, that helps to maintain a thin blade. You don't want your edge to start getting thicker. Just a very point I need to get here. That's the, on this particular knife, that's the most important part. <laughs> it's a tip. Yeah, I can feel that feather edge right up to the point. Now I just <clears throat> turn it around and do the other side. You can feel that feather all the way up. She's good to move on to the next level. Yeah, I can see it's getting shiny again. Success. Oh, for the little, little one. Now I've moved that uh, feather edge back and forth a couple of times with that fine stone. Now, this one I'll straw, but I must get, oh, sorry Ben. This is a polishing compound, which is, you can pick up at most hardware stores. It comes in a variety of courses. This is a kind of a medium fine buff and you apply it to a piece of leather. You can use like a felt or a leather or even a wooden wheel on a on an arbor if that's how you're gonna go. Uh, yeah. You wanna be careful on those uh, felt and leather and so on arbor wheels that they don't overheat the blade. Anytime you got a mechanized device on your steel, friction can overheat it. Anyway, I, I like to use leather like just like the good old days when the barber was sharpening his razor. Same deal like they did. Of course you go this way so that the blade doesn't dig into the leather, of course. It doesn't take much to put a real glassy finish to it, right? So that's that side. I'm going to do the same to the other side. The feather edge on this particular knife is so small, it's not going to show up. Sometimes, like on a hunting knife or something like that, if you really grind it, you know, hone it a lot, you get a heavy enough um, feather that when you do the buffing process, you end up with this thread of steel coming off, which is like a little, little miniature samurai sword. <laughs> Ribbons of steel. I've stropped this down uh, several times on both sides. I don't feel a feather edge on either side, which means to me that it's disappeared, it's gone and it's where I want it to be. Sharp, 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 and it's biting in very nicely. <laughs> You can hear that through the microphone. Oh, sorry. Like, <laughs> well, that's what you're listening for. If you didn't hear that, if it was very quiet, then you'd be like, well, that's not very sharp. So <laughs> that's what you listen for. <laughs>